Well, it's a crazy place in our solar system. We'll go to Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Grab a drink and sit under the stars. On to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. And after Neptune, we're gonna be famous when we land on Pluto. Here we find ourselves on the bustling campus of Stanford University, a unique habitat teeming with its own variety of species of student life. See them in their natural habitat, caught in peaceful moments of quiet study. Oh dear. Ah! This frosh is eager for her first day of classes. Little does she know, she's about to be asked her name, major, and place of origin approximately 50 times in the next half hour. What's your name? Where are you from? So what's your major? Wait, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, I think my cousin's uncle's brother's dog's from there. Nice. That's really cool. Wait, what's your name again? Here to explain this phenomenon is renowned wildlife ethologist Dr. Fulcrum Tuch, MD, PhD, Esquire, the third. It is truly fascinating how these creatures learn about one another. We call the first few 
weeks of fourth quarter, the discovery phase, the phase in which the frosts are eager to learn more about each other, and yet are too timid to ask more than a few measly questions. For the next two weeks, at least, their relationships will go no further than skin deep, as is the sociolinguistic context of the Bay Area. After that, though, all bets are off, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Observe here, one of the most competitive settings in the world, the Dining Commons. See the students fight for their means of survival. They fight over the coveted plates. We should move on before this gets ugly. As edible food is a limited commodity at Stanford, the students who are lucky enough to come across sufficient sustenance will surely capitalize on it, like this one here. He will eat hastily, as he does not know when his next meal may be. Some, however, are not so lucky. This young frosh has only found one measly cookie. And what's more, there are predators nearby. Here in the dining commons, it is every student for themselves. Next, we observe a discussion section in the basement of Wallenberg Hall. At any given hour of the day, most student species prefer doing the absolute minimum to receive their participation rations and get a passing grade. As such, they have evolved a variety of methods of avoiding eye contact with the instructor. All right, so to start session, let's begin by discussing what we all thought about the readings today. Anyone want to start? The tension in the room is high since someone must speak to satiate the instructor's expectations. The engagement of one member is enough to reflect strongly on the rest of the pack, but they must speak wisely. This student decides to take matters into her own hands. Well, I thought that the intersectionality between the two chapters really exemplified, you know, the duality between the two characters and the way that they're falling out of love with one another, and you know, just the really deep richness of the environment really reflected on that relationship. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And just piggybacking off of that... The instructor is dissatisfied, but impressed that these students have managed to say so much, yet transmit so little. Unfortunately, due to university labor-based grading policy, the instructor cannot punish them for their efforts. Meet the bikers, perhaps the fastest moving creatures in this ecosystem, adapting to their West Campus homes. Their speed rivaled only by their complete lack of spatial awareness. This young one is trying to adapt. He still struggles with a common rite of passage, texting while biking. Observe his tenacity. This biker is still adjusting to life on two wheels. What she doesn't know is that her opponent is headed clockwise. A wildlife photographer caught this dangerous occasion on live camera. Are you okay? My leg hurts. I just got hit by a bike.
the wrong way. Just to make a left, they went the wrong way. They got in the crash, they went the wrong way. Almost dead because they went the wrong way. What a freshman look, they went the wrong way. Counterclock was no, they went the wrong way. What a fool just look, they went the wrong way. Don't say more, we know you went the wrong way. On the day I arrived on this I rode off to class I could never know What the future would hold Nor foresee this great tragedy I should have been wearing my helmet And maybe some knee pads But now I'm here on the ground in fear I see a light, the end must be Yeah, I'm gonna send it. Send. I 
I'd love to share my face with you, but I'm just a virtual friend living in Snapchat. But I'm still here to chat and keep you company. How about sharing a fun fact with me? Smiley face, electric guitar, <laughs> Erlenmeyer flask with green liquid. <laughs> virtual friend living inside Snapchat? Dude, she just called you a friend! No, I know that time, but <laughs> dodged the face yeah. Like, I'm thinking about it now, I've actually never seen her face what? once. You don't think that's me? Yeah, well, I've seen her bit moji. Oh, they never look the same. Okay, no. you know what? This feels super one-sided. Mm -hmm. What even are we? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry you feel that way, Tommy Salami 22. <laughs> Sad face with tear. We're just two friends chatting on Snapchat. Oh. Twin oh. ballerina emoji. Oh. <laughs> I really thought she was the one. Yeah, I saw a future with this woman, Athena. I thought you were going to get married. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's really not. Um, Yo! <laughs> hey, uh, uh, what's this flashing about? I, I just started texting this new girl, and... Uh, wait, what's her name? I, you know, it's kind of weird. I think it's pronounced Maya. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Give me that! We are done, you two-timing ho! <laughs> I'm sorry if I've done something to upset you, Tommy Salami 22. Hands in prayer. Please let me know if there's any way I can help. Smiley. Smiley, smiley. Oh, okay, you know what? Forget that. I'm going to block you. It is not possible to block my AI. If you are dissatisfied with your experience, you can upgrade to Snapchat Plus, where you can customize my personality. I can be a pirate princess or a vaguely Eastern European wench. <laughs> you know what? Just forget about Maya. You don't need her. There are plenty of other fish in the sea. That's right. Yeah. And you too, Zane. We're going to have better luck in the future. I sure hope so. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> On your own. You really have no life. Don't mention you don't have a life. Hey. That all you do is text them. Pretend you're not just staring at your phone. So don't text them back yet. Don't spoil your perfect timing. Let their heart grow fonder while they wait for you for six or seven minutes. Then go ahead and send. And they'll be so in love they won't know what to do. Let's try. So now that you've texted them, all you have to do is wait for them to reply. Wait, that's much too soon. No. They saw you What? No, dude. It's not the end of the world. Just finish the text. And wait. 
and sent. If you remember everything we've taught you, everything we've taught you, you'll be the goat of flirting just like that. Just like that. The suavest and the best. You're set for life unless all bets are off if you start using Snapchat. So don't text them back yet. Nothing sexier than a space cadet. A simple rule for good communication. Don't text them back yet. That's all you need to know. And you'll become a savvy texter through and through. So add a little winky face or two. You're playing hard to get. Yeah, you'll be hard to get. Cause it's really hard to get a hold of you. Get a hold of you. Acapella groups, alike in dignity, in fair Tresida, where we lay our scene. From ancient dance break to new melodies where seventh chords make civil songs unclean. From forth the fatal mouths of these two foes, a pair of part-crossed lovers lose their voice. The fearful passage of their horse-throated love is now the 15 minutes traffic of our screen. Do you, you like, like to sing? sing? Oh. My name is Lydia, and I'm the music director of Stanford's premier a cappella group, the Aka Capulets. We only sing in 16 parts, and there are only 16 of us, so we're like incredibly. Wow! <laughs> what are two fine soloists such as yourselves doing at this table? The name's Chord chord song to you. And I'm the bangin' music director, MD for short, of the song to use. Yes, that's my last name. The name's Chord, chord song to you. And let's just say I put the fella in acapella. Oh, that's good. I'm also the bangin' music director, MD for short, of the song to use. And well, we're actually Stanford's premier a cappella group. Don't listen to him. He doesn't even have perfect pitch. <laughs> well, do you, can you two say vocal pr 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 percussion? Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and... You know what I mean. We don't need perfect pitch to sound better than the Anka Capulets. And we don't need vocal percussion to stay in time. Ugh, Cord, he's a piece of work. Right, okay, I wasn't gonna say anything. I was thinking this, Right, yeah. yes, okay. But like, he doesn't even care about the song to use music, and you can tell. But I don't wanna talk about that slime ball. My name's Lydia. I'm named after the Lydian scale. Damn, your parents sound cool. Oh, they're like super musical. So I need this group to be good, and I need to find stellar soloists. Well, that's not what we heard at the ICCAs, where we got fourth place! Fourth place? I seem to remember you getting knocked out at the quarterfinals. Uh, well, that's if you even made it to the quarterfinals, which you said you did, but I don't believe you. Hi, 
I'm Julie 18th note. Oh, cool. Like one and two and three uh, and no, four. No, no, much faster than that. Um, anyway, I'm really excited for this acapella group. I've been singing since I was like two years old, so it's always been my dream. Hi, I'm Achella Romeo. I'm from Verona, New Jersey, and I'm new to this group, and I'm really excited, and I love to sing, and I'm so excited. Oh, hey, how's it oh, going? Uh, do you want to marry me? What? Uh, I'm a, a duet? chords really came together at the end. You performed so well, and you didn't even need a warm-up. I don't know about you, but I love dominant chords. Me too, but I went a little flat at the end. I hope you don't mind. Second inversion might be my new favorite chord position, but you really surprised me with how you worked those tones. Of course, I love toes. No, tones. Oh, yeah, those two, those two. I'm so mad we didn't get both of those soloists. I think I'm gonna pull a friendly prank on the song to use to get back at them. You! You had mono. <coughs> <coughs> Go cough on the song to use snacks. <coughs> those damn Aka Capulets got our base. Two acapella groups alike in dignity. Fair Tresider, where we lay our scene. From ancient dance break to new melodies where seventh chords make civil songs on. When we get them back, they're about to print their music soon, right? That's it. You! Go monopolize the printer. Okay, you got it, boss. Oh, uh, sorry I'm late, y'all. Song to use for printing for like 40 minutes. Ah, uh, we'll we show them. Get back. Yeah. yeah. Julie 18th note, double book their rehearsal space. Um, Achella Romeo told me he's practicing for a solo. I think, I think he really needs to see I don't want to hear it. You make sure they don't have a rehearsal space, or you won't have a solo either. Fuck! They locked us out of our rehearsal space. Hachella Romeo, I need you to do something for me. What? Come here. What? I don't know if I can do that. It's come to this. If you say so, boss. Okay, time for a run through. It was a cello Romeo. I saw him sneaking in before rehearsal. Oh no. A cello Romeo. I knew it. Get me the president. Richard Soller? No. The cultural icon. Got it. A cello Romeo did what? I think it's going to be all right. I got you. You sure? Yeah. What's the worst you could say? I'm, I'm really scared though. Bro, it feels so chill. Like, nothing to play. You got me? I got you. Bro. For sure? Okay, I, I trust you. you. I'll be right here. The name's Tessier Levine. Former president, Tessier Levine. Who? Former president, no, no, Mark no, Tessier. No, old man. Who asked? <laughs> Good one. Achella Romeo, I am very disappointed in you, young man. You have violated the fundamental standard. Something with which I'm very familiar. Big talk from you, former president. That's enough! I was merely going to refer you to the Office of Community Standards, but you've crossed the line. I hereby declare that you, Achella Romeo of Verona, New Jersey, are hereby banished going forward 
from here on out, effective immediately, as soon as possible. I've never heard that rule before. Bro, I don't know if anyone has ever told you MTL, but you're so unchill. Sick burn cord, but maybe it's time for you to start taking some responsibility for the song to use. Responsibility is nuts. I'm responsible for your mom. That really hurt my feelings. You're done. You're done. What? No, dude. And take your chair with you. Finally, Julie 18th can focus on her music. I wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> oh, my cello Romeo. <laughs> if I can't have a cello Romeo, sweet, sultry, smooth, deep, sultry, wait, I said the button already, honey voice, the world can never have mine either. I will drink only milk and smoke hella cigs. My voice will be forever ruined. I will never speak again. <coughs> Julie 18, no, no. If the world is rid of your voice, it will be rid of mine as well. For without the touch of your perfect thirds, my vocal cords are useless to me. No! A Cello Romeo! The milk and steaks didn't work. I guess I just have really good vocal health or something. Is it too late now to say sorry? Cause I'm missing more than just our harmonies. What? I didn't. What do you say? I didn't. Without your voice, my life is empty. And thus, I must rid myself of my voice going forward from here on out, effective immediately, as soon as possible. Did you hear about a cello Romeo and Julie 18th note? Are they dead? No, 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 ew. Um, they just ripped out their vocal cords. They, they can't sing anymore. They might as well be. Good point, yeah. Cord, I know I told you to take more responsibility for the song to use, but I'm the one who got us into this mess in the first place. I know I have perfect pitch, but I think I might have relative morals. No, it's my fault. I got so caught up in our fighting that I didn't realize what I was doing until it was too late. I pushed our fella out of acapella. Oh, that reminds me, the big show is tomorrow. Would you guys happen to have anyone to fill in for Julie 18th now? If you have someone to cover for a cello Romeo, I do. <sighs> What a splendid idea! We can put aside our differences, unless you guys go sharp, that I will Whatever. still point out. Sorry, sorry. But we can put on a joint concert. P -p -p perfect I thought we were gonna have to cancel the big show. But I guess if we work together, we can, can do, do it. it. Do it! <laughs> than the Montecapulets. <laughs> we got vocal pr pr percussion Ugh, cord? I didn't look at the camera. <laughs> Me too. I went a little flat at the end. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs>
to the enchanted broccoli forest. The <laughs> and like start grunting. Like, <laughs> go. You! You had money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And so concludes our tale of song and sorrow. Their voices hoarse, but singing through till morrow. rising at an alarming rate. Scientists estimate that over 400 billion tons of glacial ice melt into the seas every year, plunging into the seas as they rise higher and higher. By the year 2040, the glaciers may have fully melted, plunging all of that water into the seas as they rise and rise and rise, and rise! Uh, Hurricanes will ravage the coastlines. Floods will sweep away millions. The fires of industrial hubris will burn the ground beneath our very feet. And we pay for the mistakes that we've made. Flee! Flee England! Flee as we take Can't we look on the bright side? The, the bright side? Are you listening to a word I've been... Shh, well, of course I was listening, and I just think you were onto something with the whole Flea Inland bit at the end there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay, um, well, I sell real estate in Kansas City, and here's how I see it. Um, can you guys actually help me out? Can you do something a little more jolly, like one, two, three, four? Do, do. Perfect, that's just it folks, thank you so much. Uh, let's see, uh, picture this. Uh, you wake up in the morning, feel a salty breeze, hear the seagulls call, but the right can see. If you put it like that, it's not so bad, right? But the coastal states are flooded, but we don't let that get us down. Cause soon we'll have beautiful waterfront property 
in Kansas City Beach Town. Bum, 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 yeah, the icebergs bum, are bum, all melting now, bum, but bum, we'll bum, stay bum, high bum, and dry. Can't decide, but oh, oh, be sad when Florida floods. Well, oh, I can't bring myself to cry. The penguins and but the polar bears oh, will no. join the dodo bird. But the sun is up that Oh, I can't let that go. Well, I guess a beach house in Kansas City is pretty hard to argue with. That's what I was saying. Guys, come on, seriously? But I'm going to argue with that anyways. No backbone. (laughs) Zero backbone. You see, I have something of a morning routine. I go to the bathroom. I wake up. In that order. (laughs) And then I go outside for a nice, brisk walk. But say for a moment that I take your advice. You know, the world can burn a little bit, but I can't accept wet socks when I walk outside in the morning. Like, that is just unacceptable. Okay, okay, whoa, whoa! Again, people over the top. Um, Can I have that fun one again? Yeah? There we have it. Okay, um, how can I... Think of the busy intersections that make walking a chore. You can say that again. That make walking a chore. Like this guy, what? He just won't be around to bother you anymore. I mean, it's not jaywalking if I'm swimming, right? That's it. When socks are wet from walking, your travel plans won't be dead. Because who needs their city streets to be that walkable? When you can just swim instead Yeah, with no need to worry about Just how we'll get around My morning stroll's impossible But there's no need to worry if I don't drown The floods will cover so much land That it's hard for crops to grow But the sun is out and the surf is up So I can't let that go There's just one problem It'll take years for the ocean to rise And get all the way here I can't wait that long And the oceans to melt today I'll do what I must, cut down all the trees, warm up the atmosphere, boil the sea, I'll sell the oil, blow the gas, those climate scientists can kiss mine. The surf is up in Kansas City, and I'm the reason why. The rest of the world is under the waves, but I think they can swim just fine. All the major land-based species have largely ceased to be. But the sun is out and the surf is up, so I'm not worried about anything. Gonna take a dip in the rising sea. about you guys, but I'm honestly getting kind of bored. Can we switch the channel? Beep. (laughs) 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 All right, folks, it's time for your favorite game show, Name That Dish. That's right, Jack. Welcome to Name That Dish. Okay. <laughs> My name is Ari Yaga, and I am just thrilled for an extreme. For tonight's contestants, first up, we have an experienced senior chord song. T- Okay, <laughs> next, sophomore Julian. Very good point. Hey, and
and our final contestant, new admit, Sally. Oh, I can't wait to dine at all these halls. Okay. Uh, let's jump right in. A- and remember, tonight's winner will receive 500 meal plan dollars. Well, it'll get you absolutely nothing. (laughs) All right, Julian, you are up first. Name this dish. Um, Broccoli. Incorrect. Oh, I know this one. Obviously, it's seasonal steamed vegetables. Correct! Yeah. That's right. Ariaga staple. All right, time for question two, an impossible one. (laughs) Cord, what is this dish? An easy one. That's the Beyond Burger. And you're beyond wrong. (laughs) This question is impossible to get right. Sally? Well, Stanford is the farm, according to the brochures, so maybe the farm burger? Uh, Nope. (laughs) <laughs> Come on, this question is literally impossible. Julian? Well, if it's not the beyond, and if it's not the corn, it must be the impossible burger. Finally! <laughs> <laughs> and for the last dish. <laughs> oh. Uh, oops, uh, that's back from when Stanford had normally sized dishes. Uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> much better. Sally, you're up. This is a tricky one. Okay, well, if it looks like chicken and it smells like chicken, it must be chicken? So close, uh, but no. Julian? I'm sorry, but neither of those were correct. Cord, this is your chance. The one, the only, chick apostrophe is... Yes! 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 Very good. Wow. What a riveting start to tonight's show. Next up, we'll dive into the world of athlete dining. Oh, no. 
You'll get the joke later. Just let it marinate for a few hours. It's not marination. It's fermentation. Man, so hungry. I can't wait to go to Chipotle after this. Chipotle. Oh, do you mean Chipotle? Right, right. Like my favorite Greek philosopher, Aristotle. <laughs> This has been the 12 Days of Blitz Night.
So if you guys were uh, at Spring Show last year, you'll remember that I presented my uh, power work um, in the graph of, um, you know, how close you should be talking to somebody and how loud you should be talking to somebody who has earbuds. So I had, I had a new uh, bit of research um, that I wanted to talk about because something happened. I had a performance um, on a Monday a few weeks back in the quarter, and one of my friends sent a message in the group chat saying, um, come see Uksher, watch this performance on a Wednesday. Now, um, quickly go to the next slide, please. Oh, next slide, next slide. Oh, okay, we're going to do arm raise. Um, yeah, no, put that down. Um, so for those of you that thought Wednesday to Friday, they meant five days when they said, come see Uksher next Monday. Do they mean five days in the future or a week and five days in the future? Uh, so raise your hand on five days. All right. Okay, okay. And say, uh, raise your hand on a week and five days now. Okay. You know, honestly, I was expecting the opposite result, but if you raised your hand on five days, you are correct. I mean, objectively, that was when the performance was. Um, <laughs> but it got me thinking, what does, uh, what does the next keyword mean when it comes to, you know, uh, days of the week? So go to the, go to the next slide. I think we can agree that if somebody says next Wednesday on a Wednesday, they mean seven days in the future, right? Okay. Next slide. Um, so next Thursday would also mean eight days in the future, correct? Okay. Uh, next slide, Friday, would be also uh, nine days in the future. Okay, wonderful. Um, next one, though. Um, Saturday and Tuesday. Next slide, please. Um, oh, Monday and Tuesday is actually what we're working with here. Um, yes, so Monday was the objective truth. Five days in the future is what they mean when they say next Monday on a Tuesday. On a, Monday, on a Wednesday. And Tuesday, therefore, following, you know, the fundamental theorem of calculus, therefore, Tuesday would be six days in the future, right? Continuity and all that stuff. And so Saturday is, of course, you know, 10 days in the future, I believe that's the math on that one. But here's an issue, here's an issue. All right, Sunday is too soon for you to say something, but you wouldn't say next Sunday for, for four days, but you wouldn't say it for 11 days either, really. So what the problem is, if your event is four days in the future, you should really just, next slide, please. You should really shut up about it. Yeah. Um, you should have you should have said something sooner, um, or just say anything. Even if you say like upcoming Sunday, that's like too many syllables. Just like you got to stop. All right. So next next slide, please. The issue is, what if the day you're on is not a Wednesday? All right. <laughs> so I wanted to draw this uh, this table. Next slide, please. Oh 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 this mathematics. So let's say let's say um, let's have zero represent Monday, Sunday rather. One represent Monday. And X be the day that you're on, and Y be the day that you're talking about, all right? So next slide, please. <clears throat> That's... <laughs> who left that there? That's the wrong equation. Next one. Um, okay. So we have this 2D chart that, that has a um, table, table, whatever, of what day you're talking about and what day you're on, all right? And so... If we're looking at Wednesday, it follows like the same kind of structure we're talking about. I had to fill in 11 on Sunday for Wednesday, like, but I don't personally like agree with it, but there really is no correct answer. Um, so yeah, I mean, the formula basically is there are seven days in a week, which means that the range of our answer has to be seven days long only. Um, so there has to be some sort of a modulo seven somewhere in there. And it turns out that the answer ranges also generally go from 5 to 12 or 4 to 11. So short of a few exceptions, next slide, please. This is the equation I came up with. Um, where, so if you're on a Sunday, for example, y minus x would be, and you're talking about a Wednesday, that's day 4 and day 0, which means your negative 4 minus 5 modulo 7 would be 5 plus 5 would be 10. That's definitely not the right math. I did that on the spot. It's fine, though. Um, anyway. <laughs> So conclusion, next slide. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I hope, I hope I could provide some insight into, um, you know, how, how we can be more careful about communication uh, when it comes to using the next keyword. Um, it is very dangerous, all right? Use it with a lot of caution. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>
Do 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 Everyone, hey, I've got something to say, and it touches each one of us every day. It's hard to admit it's a little risque, but I think that it's time that we all threw our shame away. Everyone pees in the shower. If you think that I'll judge you, I won't If you're laughing right now, then you don't care Who knows that you be in the shower And that's cool for sure But if you're not laughing, you just don't want people to know That you be in the shower I know that you be in the shower Sometimes it's cold and you don't even know when you get in the shower that you've got to go But then the warm water flows on your fingers and toes and you stop And you say, oh, oh. screw it And then you let it go, everyone feels in the shower Don't try to tell me you don't Everyone feels in the shower you think that I'll judge you, I won't If you're laughing right now, then you don't care Who knows that you be in the shower And that's cool for sure But if you're not laughing, you just don't want people to know That you be in the shower I know that you be in the shower So drink your filth and do it with pride And if you have doubts, then I'll be right by your side Let's make a pact that when we get home tonight Everyone here will be in the shower At your dorm you'll be in the shower At the gym you'll be in the shower At your grandma's be in the shower <laughs> Guys, what's going on? We don't actually pee in the shower I thought people peed in the shower Maybe it's only just me I thought people peed in the shower Maybe I need their appeal If you're laughing right now it's because it's a joke I don't pee in the shower I simply bespoke But if you're not laughing It's because you think it's gross That I pee in the shower You know that I pee in the shower You know that I pee Everyone pees in the shower Don't try to tell me you don't Everyone pees in the shower If you think that I'll judge you, I won't If you're laughing right now and you don't care Who knows that you pee in the shower And that's cool for sure But if you're not laughing, you just don't want people to know That you pee in the shower, I know Every day won't you be in the shower? Beep 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 in the shower. Beep 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 beep. You can make the world a better place if you pee in the 
Shit by nine. It's nine o'clock before I know it, and I've barely begun. Stay here forever. 